I think focusing on individual outcomes is incredibly helpful as we go through the analytics and understanding whatever the outcome is, number of engaged learners based on whatever statistics, number of degrees, number of certifications, but then further understanding like as a result of that outcome, how does that impact someone's life? And that also helps shape the metrics underneath those top line macro metrics because one of the worst things we can do is get a vanity metric that doesn't actually mean anything, right? Like maybe it is certificates or, or whatever that, that are issued to people. But if we don't understand the, the downstream impact of actually issuing those certificates and have some real use cases and stories behind that, um, it may not actually be what we should be measuring and optimizing for. So I think taking the time to do some user research and really trying to understand our outcomes beyond the analytics is incredibly helpful. Well, the, the companies that have adopted these types of programs, they get more engagement in their learning and they get more uh, outcomes from a learning, the learning of the, the people in the, in the organization. Uh, Vin, I def- definitely want to bring you in on this one. Uh, anything about analytics? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think to Andrew's point, I think we need to be careful about the metrics that we're measuring. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have to go beyond the vanity of the metrics itself and go uh, actually what it's doing for the learners. You know, uh, also another point is um, who is seeing these insights, right? So we could have um, the learners see only a part part of the insights so it is the algorithm fine-tuned towards you know the system or the learners right so there there are those um ethical boundaries there as well uh but i think um also something to keep in mind is as we build these systems uh we all kind of know this inherently but we're so used to uh software uh the deterministic nature of software that you definitely get the answer predictably every time, but AI is so probabilistic, right? So you, you don't, you don't get the same answer every time. So keeping that in mind will help with, so you're, you're kind of abstracting analytics is abstracted with an AI instead of software now. So it's not consistently accurate all the time. So it it needs uh, people who are running these systems, AI systems uh, need to keep that in mind as they, think about how to fine tune or take decisions on these learners, right? Yeah, sometimes I, just the, having these uh, human in the loop at that particular point is very important. It's like you are reduced from 1,000 possibilities using AI to maybe five possibilities, but the AI will always be confused with those five possibilities. And uh, having a human decide, okay, maybe the number two is the best possibility, right? I think that helps a lot. As part of transparency, isn't it? You're 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 transparently sharing with them how you're taking them down the the education path. There is is that important. And Paul, how do we balance transparency with with privacy when every click that they make is actually educational? You know. Yeah. Well, look, we all we all are data points, but as they say in various, it's like you can trick and controls the data controls its interpretation. He who controls the data, he also controls its use, which is obviously your ethical um, issues on steroids. And obviously, we found social media, there are people with their thumbs on the, the, the way in which the data is used to influence people. So hopefully, and I shouldn't say hopefully just in wishful thinking, but hopefully in proactive behavior and governance and I think some of the things that were talked about earlier is that you, you really... Uh, uh, force an organization or the user of the data to find its best outcome in the interest of the people, as opposed to uh, compelling people into one single, um, I don't know what the right word is, the one single pathway. So I think that bottom line, we, are, we all are data points, that's a fact. Um, how people use that data point to help us learn is another important fact. And obviously, when you're dealing with enterprise, there's a lot of control the enterprise has. When you're dealing with a platform, there's a lot of, you know, uh, influence they have as to what you see. So these tools are not, I mean, we all know that these tools are not just mystically, you know, uh, floating around in the ether. They're being managed by people. And how we 
create guidelines and, and rules. Uh, in the United States, uh, I've moved to Europe recently where I believe there's more rules, although I haven't learned them all. Um, but there, there are rules in which data can and should be used to, uh, to, uh, to, a, to a positive personal outcome as opposed to whether it's politics, whether it's you know, some, forcing someone down a path in their own education. It, I think it's complicated. Look, it's very complicated. The whole thing is complicated. But for the most point, I think that we have to realize we all are data points. Obviously, that can be influenced and manipulated. And we have to be, as builders of systems, mindful of that. And uh, transparent, as you just mentioned, is, 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 is vital. It's absolutely essential. So what they want to add to this, and I want to connect it back to what Andrew said, key word was impact. So we're, we're giving people to go possibly to learn things, but they need to be able to go apply that learning to have an outcome. But like, what is that impact? What is that action they're going to take? Like, I've seen this time and time again, what people are going to do, we're going to set up a data literacy program. People need to go learn about how to go use data, that stuff. And they basically go through a bunch of theory. And then at the end, they're like, I don't have the tools. I don't have access to the tools. I don't have the particular product involved. Like, what is the thing I'm going to go apply this for right now? And 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 then but I, I didn't. I wasn't. I was able to apply the impact for that. And I think this is not just for kind of this learning conversation. Think this happens a lot in data analytics in general. That that we bring all these data points and then we create these great dashboards and like, oh, this is what's happening. This is what's going. This is what's going down. So what? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to take an action that's going to make an impact, that's going to change something that is going to improve and so forth? I think that we need to have that full feedback loop because I think if it just ends up like, or oh, we're just collecting data points and creating uh, dashboards and figuring out insights, it's like insights is really not the lens here. we got to take those insights and drive action to that and, and make an impact. That's that feedback loop we have to go do. And that's a, from a technology perspective, but also from a personal perspective to really understand what people are, what does success look like? So what? What's it for me? Well, making an impact is ultimately one of those goals that they may not, they may not state, but it is a goal that they have. They want to make an impact on the organization. So we need to take that into account as we direct their, their education. Uh, I definitely wanted to get Andrew in on this one about transparency you've worked with universities most recently and so on and i think that that's becoming a big issue there so how do you see it it's that is that core tension between innovation and protection that as Juan noted we've had forever as long as we've been dealing with data we've been trying to balance innovation and protection and the ai industry is shaping up to look a lot in my opinion like the insurance industry where it's regulated at the state level mm. uh, at, except in europe <laughs> for for paul they've got the eu ai act but uh you have to focus on is the outcome is is the student is the learner the product or are we driving positive outcomes for that learner? And are they aware of the data that we're collecting and using for them? And are we using it on their behalf or are we using it for us? And if we're just using it to train, could we do that in a different way? Could we generate synthetic data, for instance, um, to do all of, do of all, all of our pre-training or, or fine-tuning on the back end? So it's, it's really trying to come at it with an ethical perspective rather than just by the letter of the law. Um, and I think if we can do that, and if we can explain to the users with a, a straight face and without shame how we use their data, then we'll be on the right track. 